Bismillah. Stock for law. Assalamu alaikum. I know a shake. How you doing today? Wa well, alaikum salam. I am well, Shay. How are you? Alhamdulillah. 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 All is love. All is light. All praises. Gonna Amin. send this. Uh, alhamdulillah. I'm gonna send this reminder text out real quick. I'm on the road, but uh, uh okay. Let's, a few people get in. I'll um, I get we'll get some prayers in, and I'll uh, hand it over to you, sir. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. I give thanks for you. All praises, Shay. Good job. Bismillah, assalamu alaikum family, Juma Mubarak, Juma Kareem, we hope all is well, inshallah, about two more minutes at 7, 11 Eastern Standard Time, we will begin with prayer, inshallah, forgive me, I'm on the road right now, we'll open up a prayer in about two minutes and uh, turn it over to the beloved Sheikh Mount Builder, inshallah, I pray everyone is well this evening, all praises, stop for long.
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله وهو العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الفاتحة four times إن شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم استغفر الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين Our Rahman Ibrahim, Malik Yom Din, Ia Kena Abu Dua, Ia Kena Stain, Ina Sirat Al Mustaqim, Sirat Al Adinan Amta Alehim, Guide Al Magdub Alehim, Walla Dolin Ami, Bismillah Ir Rahman Ir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Liki, Iyak Na'abuwa, Iyak Na'asdari, Itinasrat al-Mustaqim, Sirat al-Adina al-Amta al-Lehim, Gairu magdubi alayhim wa la dolin. Ameen. Bismillahi rahman irahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman irahim. Maliki yomdin. Iya kena buduwa, iya kena sda'in. Iqdina sirat al-mustaqin. Sirat al-Adinan amta alayhim. Gairi al-Magdubi alayhim. Wala dolin. Ameen. Bismillah ir-Rahman ir-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ir-Rahim. Maliki yomidin. Iya kena buduwa, iya kena stahim. Idina sirat al-Musaqi, sirat al-Adina al-Amta al-Him, da'ilu mudubi al-Him, wa'adu li'in, ameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Astaghfirullah bihi, adiyya shaykh Zulu, adiyya shaykh Zulipa, adiyya serene salihu, get a jeff board him down. May Allah Katira guide us on this path. May he forgive us for all of our sins, known or unknown, permit yet to be committed. Death in between. May Katira protect our shake, raise his station to the highest and loftiest in this life and the next, forever and ever and ever. May Allah Katira protect all families, friends within our Dara, and all those who we come in contact with within our daily walk, inshallah. Love you, Allah. Thank you, Allah. May these be prayers be about the blessings of our beloved Khalid Masul, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma. Astaghfirullah. Assalamu wa barik Allah. Sayyidina wa malamna Muhammadin. Bismillah. <laughs> Mak firistan min jumla til menai, tu tu lahu min jumla til sega iri, ma al kaba iri wa min dama iri. Kahir lek fir kuri ma te kadama, ma te akal lah ma ahu ma. Bahim ni al ma wazi ni al ma, amalan wa adaban wa fatma. Rabi si fil ulu ma nafia. Al Hayati min shaka imania, ikshifli al Esrawa wa gawamida, ikairaman kashafasi ron gamida, ikshma jamia ma tafara kalada, 
Kadima Kadima Safil Kalada. Be cool at the Fakadil Azamaya. A baby cool was Tassiman Kalamia. Ablia ya Akram Ufitalawa. Kairan Katiran Minka Wal Halawa. Mariklia Lahuma Fi Hayati. Wajal Fuadi Watana Hayati. Ablia County Bishra Kuliman Yatu. Wali is a wahida abin maya go you. Kabul and a kunu be he ta ikan menazu nu vi wa ma asi. Pati wala tal akka janet salati wuida muta kunu mataka. Yara, yara he mo. It's me laira man ira he. Andre. Stop for love shara. Stock for la, 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 stock for la. Stuck for la, 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 stuck for la. Stuck for la, 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 stuck for la. Stuck for la, 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 stuck for la. Hello, 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 can you hear me? Anyone hear me, stuff for us? We can hear you, Shane. I was on the back road. They said I, I, I think I got cut off. Uh, I don't know where I was. No stuff for love. Back, back, back to the prayers. Rewind, select the rewind, select the Uruk Allahi Minay Shaitan Rajim. La Hawla Wala Kuwata La Bilahi Wa Kuwala Li Ladim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. La Huma Sali La Muhammadin Gia Daddy and Fasu Maknukati. La Huma Sali La Muhammadin Gia Daddy. Ash'aru ma'juriti, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin bi adadi, rufi lai wa ta'awati, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin bi adadi, dil bidaiti, wa nihaiti, mina mawdumi wa mawjudi ila ba'd la ba'di wa sallallahu ala hayrul kalkihi Muhammad wa alihi yajma'in, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, salatu tinkina one time, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi Sayyidina Muhammad, Salatan tunjina biha min jamil la khwali wa la fat. Mutagdila na biha jamil hajat. Tutihiru na biha min jamil sayyat. Mutafaw na biha indaka atla darjat. 
tubuliga nabiha aksal gayat minja milka irat fil hayat obadal mamai. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sallallahu ala Muhammad hundred times. Inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. 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 Sallallahu ala Muhammad 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 Muhammad sallallahu ala 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 Muhammad sallallahu Ula Muhammad sallallahu ala 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 Muhammad Muhammad sallallahu ala 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 Muhammad sallallahu Ula Muhammad sallallahu ala 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 Ula Muhammad sallallahu ala 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 Muhammad sallallahu Ula Muhammad sallallahu ala 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 Muhammad sallallahu Ula Muhammad sallallahu ala 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 Muhammad bismillahir rahmanir rahim Allahumma asli ummati Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma farij an ummati Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma iram ummati Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam La huma asli umata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La huma farijan umati Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La huma irham umata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La huma asli umata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La huma farijan umati Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La huma irham umata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kaf ha ya ayn sa'ad. Kaf ha ya ayn sod. Kaf ha ya ayn sod. Kufi tu kuludara din ya lahu bisiri la ilaha ila lahu. Habli muradi ya kama awahu bisiri la ilaha ila lahu. Ya siri al usra kama awahu bisiri la ilaha ila lahu. Allah nabi al mustafi ya lahu salibi la ilaha ila lahu. 
Salatan Mugnin B. Salam Alahi B. Siri La Ilaha Ilalahu. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alunt hundred La Ilaha Ilalahs, inshallah. Stakfla. Bismillah. La Ilaha Ilalah. 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 La ilaha illallah 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 la ilaha shaykh give a La ilaha illallah 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 hu la ilaha illallah hu la ilaha illallah 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 la ilaha Ha il Allah, la ilaha 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 shaykh ibn Fala, ilaha il Allah, la 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 ilaha il Allah. La ilaha illallah 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 The Sheikh said say la ilaha illallah until people think you're crazy Sometimes it's okay to say it reserved and other times it's okay to just say it like you're crazy inshallah we got one more la ilaha illallah Illallah to go. Anybody want to join me? A one, a two, a one, two, three. La 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 Friends, family, all praises, Juma Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Mustafa here from 
Tuba Chevy at the moment. All praises, inshallah. <laughs> Beloved Mound Builder is here with us this evening to give us a spiritual 4 forecast, inshallah. Beloved, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum, Ramatullah, Sheikh Mound Builder. Good to see you this evening, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. Good to be seen and good to be heard, especially hearing you from Tuba Chevy. That is unique indeed. <laughs> I know the feeling. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Bismillah, min rahim, audhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim, la hawla wa la kuwati la bilahi wa huwa aliyu la deem. Bismillah, rahman rahim Dada Jeff, Petit, Serene Tuba, and Juma Mubarak to everyone who is on the call tonight. How's everybody feeling? All praises, all praises. Allah is, Allah is beneficent. Allah is beneficent and merciful. Islam. Islam. Alhamdulillah. Good to hear. Your Feeling voice. good, like Allah always should, Shaykh. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> we got some people in the house tonight. It's Juma night. And we are very, very happy to see another Juma because it's getting crazy out here. And not everybody made it to another Friday Juma. But we give thanks for the opportunity to be here and to be able to share. We give thanks for Sheikh Mustafa and his magnificent opening as always. We certainly send barakas upon our Sheikh, Sheikh Sufi Ba, for his light and his wisdom and his direction as we move forward on this murid path. We are thankful for all of the Sheikhs in this order and for our lineage of Sheikhs going all the way back to Serene Tuba and for the families of the sheikhs and the families of all of us who are in the Dara, that we continue to strive and be well and do the work that we are here to do without fear and being successful on this murid path is what we're all about and utilizing the best wisdom and the best routes to arrive at that destination of success. This is now, of course, the season of fall, which we call the season of Sheikh Gibra fall because it is the fall season. And the wow. fall season is the wind down season. We're winding down to at least what the calendar system calls here in the West, the nearing the end of the year, the last, couple of months of the year is what we're gearing up for. And of course, what that includes is a lot of holidays that are celebrated here in the West. Halloween, for one, which I just learned in recent years is a very, very huge holiday with lots of parties and that type of thing. And then, of course, we have Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. The point of it being is when we look at how the West and when we look at how the people who are in charge have put forth energy and effort into celebrating their holiday, whatever holiday they deem to call one, they have placed upon us an example of how we should look at and celebrate and commemorate days that are significant for us. So as we move forward into these Western holidays, being the observer as we always are, it's good to take note and to be aware of how we can better celebrate the days that are significant for us as Muslims, as Moritz, as people here in the West, honoring our culture, our ancestors, our tradition, and our way. 
So we have our things to celebrate and we want to make sure that we do that in the very best way and the most festive way because it is a gift and a blessing of Allah to have something to celebrate, and particularly in this time. So that's one thing that we can be mindful of. And with that as a backdrop, on tomorrow is a very significant day for Muslims here in the West. And just out of curiosity, does anybody have any idea what day that could possibly be? All of Allah's woman's birthday. I could be wrong. Alhamdulillah, I knew Sheikh Sally would be in the game. Yes, it is indeed the birth date of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a very, very, very significant individual when it comes to Islam here in the West and beyond because his impact and his reach was just that great. Those of us who have been touched by the knowledge, the wisdom of the nation of Islam, or have been in the ciphers of the gods and herbs, or have just heard of and been around and have seen the works of those who have come forth from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, whether that be, of course, Malcolm X, his son, um, Waradine Muhammad, Minister Farrakhan, Dr. Khaled, numerous ministers that have come forth under Minister Farrakhan who have brought forth great light. There have been many. Another one, of course, being Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf is another one. This has happened as a result of the light that came to the West and helped to raise us up from the condition that we were in under the foot and the boot of a beast and then giving us information, even in that situation, to get us up to get us moving, to help us to start making something of ourselves, despite the conditions and the circumstances that we found ourselves in, which is pretty much what we're still doing today in this installation of ourselves. So we certainly honor that work that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad put in. And without that link, and without that foundation, we could not make the link and the jump to the teachings of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, as Sheikh Farad often mentions that picture on the Muhammad Speaks and then also put in the final call in certain editions where the hands are stretching across from the east to the west and uniting. The uniting of brotherhoods from the East and the West, and the uniting of that wisdom between the East and the West is very, very important. And we are now the embodiments of that here in the West. And so with tomorrow being the birth date of such a significant individual, I definitely would not be on my job <laughs> if I did not at least make mention of that and make you all aware of that so that you can move accordingly. Does anybody have any questions or comments concerning what we've shared so far? Or is Sheikh Sally the only one who knows who Elijah Muhammad was? Or is? Not then, I want to read two quotes, just a couple of quotes from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And 
I think these two are very significant because it speaks to what we can put in place now and some of what we have put in place in terms of our plight and situation here in the West. The first quote says, discard your former slave master's names and be willing and ready to accept one of Allah's pure and righteous names that he alone will give our people from his own mouth. A good name is indeed better than gold. Does anybody have any comment on that quote? There's a bunch in that. But I want to see if anybody else is seeing some of what I see. And I know that some of you will probably even see farther than I could ever see. <laughs> but does anybody have any comments about that last quote? Discard your former slave master's names and be willing and ready to accept one of Allah's pure and righteous names that he alone will give our people from his mouth. A good name is indeed better than gold. That's the quote. That's happy shake. Bismillah. Indeed. Bismillah. That's a lot in that. Well, one of the things that I noticed with respect to this quote is if we're carrying somebody else's name, we're carrying their mindset. We're carrying their culture and their tradition, which is opposite of our culture and our tradition. We want to be a part of that which is righteous. So what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was saying was be ready and willing to accept one of Allah's pure names that he alone will give us from his own mouth. Now, when he say that he alone will give us from his own mouth, any idea what that's talking about? Well, I'll give you what my understanding is. When we talk about Allah, we are not talking about a spook or somebody that's far away. We're talking about Allah that's in each and every one of us. So when one who is a sheikh or a minister, one who is tuned in to Allah and to the wisdom and the insight that Allah is putting through that individual in that position, when they give you a name or give us a name, that is the name from Allah's own mouth because it's coming through one of Allah's vessels. So that pure and righteous name that we're given is being given to us from Allah's own mouth. We don't have to continue to walk around in the energy, in the name, in the tradition, and in the custom of other people when we can walk around in the name and the energy and the righteousness of Allah herself. And that name, whichever name is given, because all good names belong to Allah, that name is better than gold. It has more weight than the most precious things on the earth, a good name from Allah. So when I saw that quote, that's one of the things that came to me from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and what he was trying to let us know to be prepared for as we move forward and to ready ourselves to receive a name that is fitting of us. And then once we receive that name, it's up to us to walk in that energy and be the embodiment of that name. The last quote that I wanted to highlight is given to us again by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He says, you and I may go to Harvard, we may go to York of England, or go to Al-Azhar in Cairo, 
and get degrees from all these great seats of learning. But we will never be recognized until we recognize our women. Now that quote does not need a whole lot of explaining, but it's very necessary for us to be aware of how much emphasis Yahweh Elijah Muhammad placed on our women and making sure that our women were lifted up and not necessarily seen the way that many women are portrayed in other cultures that are considered Islamic. So the recognition and the acknowledgement and the lifting of our women, no nation could rise higher than its woman, another fantastic quote. But this is important because no matter which universities or places of learning that we go to, that doesn't matter if our women are still subjugated and suppressed. So as we learn in the Quran that often tells us the necessity of freeing the captive believer, it's important for us to make sure that we exercise that and recognize that when it comes to our women and giving them the proper honor and respect that is so well deserved. Does anybody want to chime in on any of those quotes? No comments on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and some of the wisdom that he left for us. Salam alaikum, Sheikh Idris Ba. Wa alaikum salam. It's good to have a woman and a Sheikah come forward with a comment. Amin. Amin. Uh, yes, I just want to say that though others may not realize a lot of wisdom that Elijah, I, I would want to say all the wisdom that Elijah Muhammad left us has come to fruition. Um, we're living in those times that he spoke about. And if we take notice to how the world is going today, one of the reasons is because the women are not placed in their rightful positions and the women have fallen off and become in competition with the men. So mm. Elijah Muhammad knew a long time ago that the woman was the second nature of God, and it's going to take the women to bring us back full fold to where we need to be. Um, and it's not that we want to take a man's place because we're not able to do that anyway. It's just that uh, Allah speaks through the women to uh, ensure that man is protected. That's why we have a special intuition. So I want to commend our one of our fathers the honorable elijah muhammad for all that he has given me because once i learned that that gave me more confidence and pride in who i was and knowing that i was a godly individual and knowing that god uses us to help keep our families and direct our families so i just wanted to share that i give honor to the honorable elijah muhammad as always long live muhammad and now, today, his words reign true, even if they try to debate it. You know how the nation does their research. We're going to come back with it. So, <laughs> I mean to that. And thank you for sharing about um, our leader. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful words. Beautiful, beautiful. Give thanks for you and that comment and your wisdom and insight. I oh, mean, we needed that. Anybody else? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sister. I'm I'm not sure how how what I'm going to say ties into everything that you've been talking about, but alhamdulillah, um, I my first experience with Al Islam was with the honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
Mm. And then the transition into um, Imam Wazidi Muhammad. And then um, I met Sheikh Hassan Sisi. And then I heard of uh, Setting Salyu. I met um, the Sheikh from Maywood. My, my memory is kind of slow these days, but I met um, Abdullah Bamba and Bay. I met him and he introduced me to Seren Salyu. And meeting Seren Salyu, I met Sheikh Ahmed Bamba. And then oh. I moved to Memphis. And here in Memphis, we have a, at Master Dumbuk Minun, we have a, a museum. And in that museum, there are some documents, um, one being a document that was signed by Sheikh Hassan Sisi and Imam, Imam Muhammad. And they committed in a meeting, they committed to bringing the communities together from Medina Bay in the United States. And then there's another document, and I can't remember the signature on it, but it was from Tuba. Mm -hmm. And it was an um, agreement for Imam Muhammad and the leadership in Tuba at that time to do the work that brings the communities together. <clears throat> So I feel I feel really blessed that Allah blessed me to live through these generations of leadership and to be able to see them working in concert or working hand in hand to build the community. I heard you mention the um, it was like a, a masthead at one time on the paper where the hands were crossing the um, yes crossing the ocean and then there was a large back page advertisement where it showed um, under those class hands there was business and education and mm -hmm. the building of the culture and the uh, responsibilities to govern and, gov and, and government and that kind of thing was all a part of what happens when you see the two uh, communities come together or work together so I'm just grateful to Allah again for the honor of Elijah Muhammad and the courage that it took for him to take on such a great and a noble task, but also I'm grateful to Allah for how he pulled all of us together to answer the prayers of Sering Tuba because Sering Tuba prayed for us mm. even before he knew who we were. He prayed That's for right. us because he, he hadn't been on this side of the ocean. He just prayed that those of us, us on this side of the ocean would be able to share with the, him the love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he had and that we would be people who were able to come back home one day, reunite with our family on the other side of the water and to <clears throat> show the world what Islam truly is. It, what Islam truly is. I'm sorry, y'all, I can barely talk too. But again, I'm excited about um, the conversation this evening. I'm grateful to Allah for all of those in that line of leadership, and I'm praying to Allah that um, the things that they prayed for us would be able to pass on to our children as well, inshallah. I mean, wa alaykum salam. Very well said. Because if we don't pass it on, then it dies with us. It dies with us. So we definitely got to tap into this next generation and get them the wisdom, and they can certainly use it. From the looks of things. Yes. And, you know, with, the, with the culture being as fiery as it is, if we give it to them properly, um, they can remedy a lot of the a lot of the problems that we see. We probably don't have the tools that we need to change the culture, but if we give them what we have, they can change the culture to reflect what Islam truly is. That's so, facts. And, and they have the courage to do that. In fact, it made me think about even uh, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the people who changed um, things most were youth. They were youthful. You know, Ali, um, Arkham, all of them, they were youth. They were 14, 15, 16, 17 year old. You know, they were not old like us or like me. <laughs> they were youthful. You just and getting started, youthful. sister. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. But, <laughs> I, you know, I don't have a hand on the technology and the language for this generation. Right. 
So it's not even proper really for me to be in the leadership position. It's proper for me to leave from behind, you know, so. Anyway. And continue to provide the wisdom because that's, what, the, you, that's what they can really utilize. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Thank you for that, sister. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Anybody else? Before we continue to move forward. Well, in moving forward, one of the things we wanted to talk about in addition to that tonight was success in Islam. And I thought about that because when we think of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was successful. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was and is successful. Let me change my language. <laughs> is successful. Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba, Sheikh Ibrahim, they are successful. All of the great sheikhs of Sufism and Islam and even other traditions and customs and ways of life and religions, if they are tied into Allah, the one true source, they are all successful. So when we look at ourselves here in the West, when we look at what we're striving to do, whether it be with our business and our family and relationships, with our Dara, with what we're creating, the goal is and always is to be successful. And we look back on those who have come before us, speaking of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and all of those great ones that have come forth from his teachings and from what he taught. They went on to become successful and that's why we know their names because of their success. So today, one of the things we wanna look at is what does it take for us to be successful in Islam? What are some of the things that we can do to be more successful and to continue to be successful as we continue to walk this path of Islam and this Morid path? How can we be more successful and what tools can we better utilize to bring that success into our immediate experience is one of the questions that we want to answer this evening. And so when we look at that, one of the first things that my mind goes to is the very beginning of man and woman, which is Adam. And Adam was given a position, a post, a job, an authority, a divine right. This is what Adam was given at the very beginning. His job was to replenish the earth and to subdue it, which means bring it under control. Because Adam, or that first man, coming forth from Allah and woman, first man and woman, because Adam represents both, they are to represent the physical manifestation of Allah on earth. So all that is in creation was put under Adam to control. This was a post or a position that Adam was given. And those of us who have come through the teachings of the nation of Islam, we're taught to stand in our posts and to occupy our posts until properly relieved. The question is, even though Adam fell, was Adam ever relieved of his post? That's a question. 
Does anybody believe Adam was ever believed, relieved of his post? His mission, his authority to subdue the earth and bring it under his control. I'm going to take that as a no. So with that being the case, we being the Adams and the Eves of today's society, we have a position and a post that we are on. That position and that post takes on different labels, whether we're on the job, whether we're in the house and we have a certain position in the house, whether it's father, mother, guardian, what have you, whether we're in a neighborhood, whether we're teaching a classroom, whether we're just walking the streets, we have a post. And everything that is in our environment, we have the responsibility and the divine authority to take charge of that and to bring it into order. Bring it into order. That's our responsibility. So when we look at the world at large and we see that there are so many things that's out of order, the first place that we want to look at is ourselves. And we want to bring, make sure that we are bringing ourselves into order, make sure that we're standing on our square correctly, make sure that we're honoring our responsibilities, making out our word bond, which means doing what we say we're going to do and honoring that. These are all very important things in terms of taking charge and subduing and bringing things under the order of Allah. This is necessary for us to be successful because if there is disorder, then success will be limited if achieved at all. But if we're bringing things into order, then success is assured. So if we're going to be success in Islam and success on our, successful on our word path, we have to make sure that we are honoring our divine responsibility and occupying the post that we're given, which is to make sure that we subdue and bring things into order that's in our immediate environment. This is not a request. This is our order. And back in the day, we know how we dealt with general orders. <laughs> they were orders and they were to be enforced. So it's the same way now with each and every one of us. We want to make sure that we enforce these orders in our life for success. What does that look like? Sheikh Sufi often says that we must have a daily habit. A daily habit and a daily routine establishes order. It establishes discipline. It helps to bring us in alignment with the law, bring our physical body in alignment with our spirit so that as we go forward, we're able to subdue the physical vessel and then that spirals out to everything that's in our environment. That's how we began as Moritz. Then we have responsibility as Sister Lydia Muhammad was just speaking about. We have responsibility to our children, to those that came forth after us, whether they're our blood children or whether they're just younger than us. We have a responsibility to pass the information on so that they'll be successful because the success of those that come after us is also our success because we're one. And just as we're successful, that's the success of those who have come before us. That's why we speak about honoring the honorable Elijah Muhammad, honoring Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba, honoring Sheikh Ibrahim Paul, honoring Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because whatever we do that is successful 
it is the success of those also who have come before us, paved the way, set forth a blueprint, and we're able to walk for on that because the information has been passed down from generation to generation. So this is one of the ways that we are to be successful. Does anybody want to comment on that? I don't want to rattle it off too long. So I want to give air for the wisdom of those who are with us to bring it forth. Okay, so I'm assuming that that is all clear. So we're going to talk about a couple of things that are essential with respect to being successful in the here and now. The first one is purification. And as you know, in this Dara, Jake Sufi often talks about how important it is to purify oneself over and over and over. He told us that Allah cannot attach himself with that which is not pure. So it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we are continually purifying ourselves. The Quran says he indeed is successful who purifies himself. So in talking about being successful in Islam and successful on this word path, purification is essential for us to be successful on this path. There's inner purification and then there's outer purification. So it's good to have the physical body purified, have on nice garments, clean garments, having on your smell good oils and have your kufi and your hat on just right and your booper tight and all that good stuff. That's good purification for the outside. But the inside needs purification also, which again is why we are taught to remember to continue to memorize the Kasai of Stafrolabihi because this serves as a purification for our internal. And that is definitely needed. The Quran also talks about in Surah 91, by the sun and the splendor, by the moon as she follows him, by the day as it shows up glory, by the night as it conceals it, by the firmament and its wondrous structure, by the earth and its wide expanse, and its enlightenment as to its wrong and its right. Truly he succeeds that purifies. There's a bunch in that, but purification is a process that is gone through by the sun, by the moon, by all of creation. Here on planet earth, we have what's called cycles. And each cycle, starting in spring, going into summer, now we're in fall, as we mentioned, and then in winter, that's a cycle. And it's a purification cycle as well because there's certain things that we're supposed to do during certain seasons. But the point is, this purification takes place in all parts of nature. And we being who we are, which is Allah's greatest creation, we too must purify just as nature purifies. So everything is in line with Allah's vibration and purification cycle. We also must be in line with that as well. So just as we purify our external body, we purify our internal body, we also purify our thoughts, and we act out of purified intentions. 
our intentions must be pure. And we always state our intentions before we do something because that is the way of Islam, stating our intention before we do something. When we continue to talk about success in the Adan, we say, Haya Salah, Haya Salah, Haya Falah, Haya Falah. That's a call to Allah, and it's a statement of our intention. It's a call to prayer, but Salah comes before Falah. So our success is based on our prayer. And our prayer is determined by our intention. So first we have the right intention, then we set that forth in prayer, and then success follows. Success has to follow because that's a natural law. This is the success formula for all of us who are walking this path in making sure that we go through this process because the only thing that can stop us from being successful is ourselves. Honoring this path and honoring this process makes us successful. The Quran says in the 23rd surah, successful are the believers who keep a guard on their prayers. These are they who are the heirs who shall inherit the paradise, they shall abide therein. So as a condition to us receiving the rewards of paradise, we must be successful in guarding our prayers. This is necessary for each of us as we continue to move forward because the guarding of our prayers, the guarding of our minds, the guarding of our thoughts helps us to be successful and keep out the negativity. One of the most challenging things that we're experiencing right now is a lot of negativity in the world. And it presents itself in different ways. It presents itself in depression. It presents itself in other forms of sickness and mental illness. It presents itself in our body language. It presents itself in the way that we express ourselves. All of these things are determined by our attitude. And if we have a positive, constructive attitude, then we can deal with and eliminate a lot of the negativity. There's always something different for us to get over, to get through, or to get around. It just keeps coming at us. So if we allow those things to keep us in a negative space, we will never receive the success that is destined for us. But if we keep our attitude straight, our focus on the reality, la ilaha illallah, Allah is the only reality. Allah is all that exists. If we really keep that as our focus, we will certainly be successful on this path. The other thing that's important for us to be successful is to make sure that we take action. Islam means peace and Islam also means submission, submitting our will to do the will of the divine, submitting the physical vessel to the will of the higher spirit. This is what Islam means, but that's an action word. There's action that must be taken to make sure that that is the case. And of course, when we talk about replenish the earth and subdue it, if we're replenishing the earth, that means that something has been taken away and taken out of the earth. 
So whenever we kill one of our naps, one of those four heads that we talk about back in the Nation of Islam days, the naps, the Howard, the Dunya, and the Shaitan, even though it wasn't explained quite that way at that time, whenever we do away with one of these naps, we have to replace that with that which is positive, constructive, and that which will aid in us being successful. That's the replenishing. Nature does not appreciate voids. Space needs to be filled with something. If it's filled with positivity and constructive actions and good thoughts and prayers and thickers and cassides, that's the environment that we want to be in. If we're noticing that that's not the environment that is around us, then all of that stuff must be done away with. And we must replenish our earth around us with these good things that will produce the success and the joy that we desire in life. That's what it means about taking action and making sure that we're replenishing those spaces that are not filled with the divine light of Allah. The next thing that we have to do in order to ensure success is to be consistent. Keep showing up. Keep being present. Keep on making sure that you're at the appointed place, at the appointed time, to the best of your ability. Keep giving yourself completely to this path or this deen that you've committed yourself to and we've committed ourselves to. Continue to give of our energy, our self, our mind, our spirit to the moving forward of this Dara and of this teaching so that it continues to ripple into the future in the minds of all of those who will come forth after us. We have a great example of that because Sheikh Sufi is one person that went to Senegal and went there a number of times, obviously, and kept coming back, bringing back more and more information. From that, look at what is taking place in the movement that's taking place here in the West. And though it may not be the mass numbers that you would see shown on NBC and CNN and that type of thing, the impact and the effect that's taking place is really, really impactful. And the ripples, the waves that's coming forth from that tsunami out in the ocean is really, really shaking up a lot of things here in the West. Our mindsets are different now as a result of that effort. Our lives are different. The lives of our family are, is different. Our movement is different. Our activity is different. And the success that we're having is very, very different. The success of this world is not necessarily the measuring stick for the success on this Sufi path. Now, I say that with qualification because we seek success in this life and the world to come. We want success here and we must have success here as well as in the life to come. So it's twofold. The success here is necessary for us because we must have a resource of finance to be able to do, do the things that we need to do to erect structures, build community, to take care of ourselves, take care of family, 
that requires capital, resources, money. So we definitely want to make sure that we're working towards success here as well as in the hereafter. Muslims have always been industrious. Industrious meaning we find a way to get the resources to do whatever it is that needs to be done to make stuff happen to the best of our ability. It may not be overnight, but by pooling our resources and working together, this is how we were able to make that happen. That consistency of effort is what's required though. That's why we gotta keep showing up, keep being present, keep putting in the work so that we can get the results that we want to have. Very, very important because we don't wanna get the idea that we can just kind of sit back and say, yeah, we're in the uh we're in the, under the covering of Serene Tuba. So everything's taken care of. No, there's still things that need to be done. There's still consistency that needs to take place on our part. There's still the honoring of our word. There's still bringing in, into order and subduing that lower nature that needs to take place as well. So all of that is important and that consistent effort is what's necessary for us to continue to be successful. Another thing that's necessary is patience, Abua. We must be patient and consistent long enough to see the success that we desire. In the third chapter of the Quran, it says, O oh, you who believe, have endurance in suffering, be patient and persevere, strengthen each other and be firm and be pious and devoted to Allah that you may find success. So patience is a prerequisite of success. We have to be patient, but not passive. There's a difference. Sometimes we consider being laid back and not doing anything, and we confuse that with patience. That's not patience. That's just somebody not doing nothing. <laughs> patience is working towards a goal even though you don't see the results of that goal just yet, you're still working towards it. And then eventually you already know that it will be successful because it can't be anything but. Sheikh Dubamba say, only those who are destined for success can come to me. That's what Sheikh Dubamba said. So if we're walking and striving to be in line with Shegah Dubamba, then we are already successful. And whatever success that we are seeking and we have not experienced yet, it will be ours to experience just as a result of us continuing to be patient. Finally, one of the things that we can look at in terms of being success, successful, excuse me, is gratitude. Gratitude, being grateful, shakur. This is important because the more grateful you are, the more favors you receive. In the Quran, seventh chapter, six and ninth verse, it says, so remember the favors of Allah that you might succeed. Just the remembrance of the good that Allah has brought into your life adds to your success, excuse me, adds to your success and helps to make you successful 
as you continue on your path. Just being grateful. Grateful for what some people call the little things. Not everything is some huge, great thing that you can look at and say, wow, I'm absolutely grateful for that. Just having the next breath is something to be grateful for. A good meal, a place to stay, having clean water, clean clothes to put on, something to be grateful for. Having health is something definitely you want to be grateful for. Being a part of this Dara, being a person who has received the light of this information that has come here into, in the West is something to be grateful for. All of these things add to our success. And when we understand that, we understand, as the Quran says in the 11th chapter, the 88th verse, to master numbers, my success is only through Allah and upon him do I rely. So success is in the reliance of Allah. These are just a couple of things to help us be successful in the here and the now. As we wage our everyday war, like those who wage war before us, there were 313 that fought in the War of Bada. Those are, con are considered to be the successful ones because that was a successful victory. So when we see the number 313, that should be one of the first things that we remember. And when we think of success, we must think of the success of those 313 who with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was successful and is successful in that battle. Each day, each and every one of us, we have different battles as well. We have different things that we have to overcome as well. But our success is guaranteed as long as we continue to stay consistent with the path that we're on. Continue to show up. Be patient. Take our time and make sure that we're going through the process correctly. Honoring those that have come before us honoring our word and making sure that our word is bond and that we are honoring what we're saying, continuing the process of purification, utilizing astaghfirullah bihi, saying astaghfirullah throughout the day, numerous times, purify ourselves on the inside as we purify ourselves on the outside, being consistent and continuing to maintain our prayer life is something that helps us to be successful. And of course, making sure that we continue to take the appropriate action that would lead to us being successful, just as those before us were successful. Does anybody have any comments or questions or ideas about success and moving forward and being successful on this path and in this work and in this Dara? Hmm. Well, I feel successful after that drink of water. <laughs> I'm <telling you. laughs> We give thanks for all things, all things. But know of a certainty that we are indeed the successful ones and we are on the path of those who are most successful in this life 
and in the life to come. Any other ideas, thoughts, or comments? Bismillah, Sheikh. <clears throat> Pardon me, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Um, it's so funny. I always was curious to what school of thought brought you into our dara and the teachings of our beloved Sheikh Sufi Bai and our master Sheikh uh, Amadou Bama. And um, you confirmed it. Um, I always thought you came from the NOI and you definitely truly exude the charismatic and the true, genuine, divine. Your voice carries the nature from, you know, what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wanted our people to know and Islam is truly um, revealed in stages and we're at a point as black people to where this knowledge is much needed. And I, I don't wanna take up too much of your time. I just wanna tell you, thank you. You truly are a divine astrologer and we love you, Dead and Jeff. Love you, brother. Thanks for that comment. I just tell people I was the son of a Baptist preacher. Uh, Bismillah, <laughs> Sheikh. Uh, I just I I just wanted to say the same thing, man. We the, the roots is truly we can hear it in your voice, Sheikh. We love you. You got the juice. Yeah, the I'm doing like you're right on point, though. Yes, I did come through the nation of Islam, of course. Uh, and that is true. I am the son of a Baptist preacher. I did grow up, you know, in the church, and a lot of that still has its place because you know we have to take the good from wherever it is and. There are some Jews in there, some real Jews in there. All the good that exists is from Allah, all of it. And so if it's in line with Quran and if it's, if it's in line with what has been taught by the great ones before us, then we can utilize it. But yes, I have definitely some of that. I have some of the teachings of the nation of Islam, and I'm grateful now to be moving forward in this path of Sheikh Al-Dubamba under the teachings of Sheikh Sufi Ba, because this is like the crown jewel in that it gives us consistent daily practices to make sure, again, <laughs> that we are successful. So I give thanks for that. I give thanks for you, brother. Much love in the light of Allah. I just want to be like you when I grow up. This been life. Love you. Oh, no, we are trying to be like Sheikh Sufi Ba. <laughs> I say. Bismillah. Anybody else have any questions, comments, or thoughts? This has been a successful Juma Friday. If not, we're going to move forward and say that we're looking forward to seeing at least some of you, hopefully many of you, on this coming weekend in Tuba Macon. Tuba Macon. We're going to be making it happen this coming weekend in the great city of Macon. And I'm looking forward to laying eyes upon all of these great lights and certainly seeing Sheikh Sufi in making as well. This is going to be a great gathering because it's always a wonderful gathering whenever we get together because the light just lights us up for days and months to come. I'm still shining based on the light of our last get together up in the mountains, which was fantastic. So each time we get together, it just gets better and better. And we're able to connect more and more with each other and also make the connection more deeply within ourselves. So those that can make it, definitely look forward to seeing you and look forward to getting some of your light as well by Allah's grace. Anything else before we close? Did I miss anything? Good to see everybody here tonight. I mean,
If not, then we'll close out with our Fatiha. Bismillah, Mena Rahim, Ode Blahim, and Ashitana Rajim, La Hala Wala Kwati Labila, He, Wahu Ali Ladim, Al Fatiha, Bismillah, Mena Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rapal Alameen, Arahmana Rahim, Maliki Omidin, Ia Kana Budua, Yakana Stain, Edina Sarata Mustakin, Sarata Ladina, and Abda Lehem, Rairo Mahdu Bialehem, Wala Dalim. Amen. O oh Allah, continue to shine your light upon each and every person that is assembled in this dara this evening. Continue to bless their families, their generations that come forth after them, and the generations that have come before them. Bless this Murid order from Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba to Sheikh Ibrafal to Serene Follow, Serene Salihu, to Sheikh Sufi Ba, to all the Sheikhs the germs, the disciples of our order, and all of our families. Help us to continue to walk in thy light and to continue to be successful over the nafs, the how the dunya, and the shaitan, that we may be the lights and the outposts of thy divine light shining forth through these physical vessels. Barke Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, Barke Sheikh Ibrafal, Barke Serene Fala, Barke Serene Sally Hu, Barke Sheikh Sufi Ba, Barke Sheikh Sufi Ba, Barke Sheikh Sufi Ba. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you for being present. Thank you for your energy and your light. And may we all continue to be successful as we move forward on this path. Amen. Amen. Walaikum assalam, Sheikh. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>